Hi, I'm Alex, and welcome to Super Make Something. Today, we're making an internet-enabled light switch. Alexa, turn on hallway lights. Okay. Let's get started. Over the course of the last year, I've purchased several Amazon Echo devices that I use throughout my house to listen to podcasts, create shopping lists, and set reminders. Several of my Echoes came bundled with smart plugs, which are awesome because they allow me to turn my house's floor lamps into internet-enabled, voice-controlled lights. Unfortunately, most of my house uses overhead lighting, meaning that I would either have to purchase an entirely new set of light bulbs or modify the wiring of my house to install internet-enabled relay switches to make all of my house lighting voice control. Fortunately, internet-enabled microcontrollers can be purchased online for just a few dollars, which, when coupled with 3D printing and a servo motor, can be used to create a mechanism that mounts to my house's existing light switches to turn every light into an internet-enabled device without needing to rewire my house. This project is made out of the following components. Four AA batteries, four adhesive-backed Velcro mounting strips, one four-slot AA battery holder, one 2N2222 NPN transistor, one 230-ohm resistor, one 4x6cm PCB prototyping board and associated wiring, one set of female header pins, one three-pin right-angle male header, one Node MCU microcontroller, one 3D printed mounting plate, one 3D printed rack, one 3D printed pinion gear, one high-torque MG90S micro servo with its corresponding servo horn and fastening hardware, and six M2 screws. An additional cover plate can also be 3D printed, which then also requires four M3 screws to attach it to the 3D printed mounting plate. This project is designed around the Node MCU, a Wi-Fi enabled Arduino compatible development board that incorporates the ESP12E module, a popular open source Internet of Things development platform that further incorporates the ESP8266 Wi-Fi chip. The Node MCU board can be purchased online for just a few dollars and has a micro USB port, which makes it easy to program and use in many internet enabled projects. To start the project, I began by soldering up the electronic circuit on PCB prototype board, which works as follows. A AA battery pack powers the MCU and servo motor, allowing me to power the project without modifying any of the wiring in my house. The positive voltage line of the battery pack connects both to the V-in pin of the Node MCU, as well as the positive voltage line of a servo motor. Because the battery pack has a limited capacity, but the project should run as long as possible without needing to swap batteries in and out, the main design consideration of this project is to minimize the circuit's power draw. Hardware-wise, this can be accomplished by putting the Node MCU to sleep using code, as well as by cutting the power to the servo motor whenever it's not in use, which eliminates the current draw the servo requires to power its internal electronics in order to hold a desired position. Unfortunately, the I.O. pins on the Node MCU are not capable of sourcing and syncing the amount of current required to drive a motor, meaning that the servo's ground line cannot simply be connected to a Node MCU pin that can be enabled and disabled via software. Therefore, an electronically controllable switch must instead be built into the circuit in order to cut the servo's power. As explained in the DIY Arc Reactor episode, a transistor, in conjunction with a current limiting resistor connected to a Node MCU's output pin, can be used exactly for this purpose, making it perfect for this application. Finally, the signal line of the servo is connected to a PWM pin on the Node MCU, which allows me to control the motor by sending it position commands. After a bit of soldering, I had a small circuit sandwich that was ready to be integrated with the project's mechanical components. With the electronics design complete, it was time to begin the mechanical portion of this build. I started by opening up SolidWorks and creating a digital assembly of the Node MCU, transistor, resistor, right angle header pins, the PCB prototyping board, and the AA battery pack. This digital assembly allowed me to design the other parts of this project around the size of these components, since I could not easily modify them because they were commercial, off-the-shelf parts. I next began to model the base plate that these components would mount to. Since the idea behind this project is that I do not need to modify any of the wiring in my house, I also had to make sure that the base plate would fit around the 5.5 by 3.5 inch light switch cover plates that I have in my house. The light switch is actuated by a servo, which drives a rack and pinion mechanism. Like its name suggests, a rack and pinion mechanism consists of a circular pinion gear, which drives a linear gear bar called a rack. As the pinion gear spins and engages the teeth on the rack, the rotational motion of the pinion is converted into a linear motion of the rack, 
creating a simple linear actuator that, in this case, can be used to flip a light switch up and down. To constrain the motion of the rack and make sure that it only travels up and down, I also model a set of guide rails into the base plate, as well as a mounting feature for the high torque 9 gram micro servo that will drive the mechanism. Finally, I modeled an optional cover plate that mounts onto the base plate in order to hide and protect the mechanical and electronic components of the build. After I was happy with the design, I exported each model as an STL file, sliced them in Cura, and transferred the generated print instructions to my 3D printer using an SD card. Thereafter, the printing started, with the print head moving across the print bed and dispensing a small stream of plastic. Because the mechanical components included features that would intermesh and slide up against each other in the light switch cover plate, each part was oriented in a way to minimize the amount of required support structure as small bits of plastic could remain after removing the support material which could then cause mechanical interference. The total print time for the rack, pinion gear, and mounting plate was approximately 16 hours. Printing the optional cover would add about 12 hours to the total print time, depending on print settings. After the parts finished printing, I next assembled the light switch. I began by screwing the pinion gear into the servo horn using the screws that came with my servo. After sliding the rack into the mounting plate, I then used two M2 screws to attach the servo assembly to the mounting plate standoffs. After this, I slid the servo cable through the mounting plate's channel and attached the circuit board assembly to the mounting plate using four more M2 screws. I then connected the servo cable to the right angle header on the circuit board, flipped the light switch over, and used hot glue to attach the AA battery pack into the recess on the back of the mounting plate. Finally, I attached a set of adhesive-backed Velcro strips to the mounting plate, after which the light switch assembly was complete. With the light switch assembled, the final step was to tackle the software portion of this build. I began by opening up my web browser and heading to the ESP8266 Arduino Core GitHub page. I then scrolled down to the Installing with Boards Manager section of the README and copied the Boards Manager URL that was listed there. I next closed my browser and opened up the Arduino IDE. Once open, I clicked on File, Preferences, and pasted the URL I had just copied into the additional Boards Manager URLs field. I then clicked OK and went to Tools, Board, Boards Manager, and typed in ESP8266 in the search bar. This brought up the ESP8266 Arduino library, which I then downloaded by clicking on Install. I next closed the Arduino IDE and reopened my web browser. There, I headed to the Emulate a Wemo device with ESP8266 blog entry by Jose Perez, which contains instructions and code for making devices with an ESP8266 chip act like a Belkin Wemo device. This allows it to be found by your Amazon Echo or Google Home devices and be controlled using either your voice, customized routines, or via their respective apps just like any other commercial smart device you would buy from the store. I scrolled down to the Using Arduino IDE section and first downloaded the ESP Async TCP library by clicking on the listed link and then downloading a zip file containing the required code from the ESP ESP Async TCP GitHub page. I then navigated back to Jose's blog and downloaded the FOMO ESP library by clicking on its corresponding listed link and then downloading a zip file containing that code from Jose's Bitbucket page. After this, I cut the two files I had just downloaded and pasted them into my Arduino's Libraries folder. I then unzipped both files, renamed them, and cleaned up the Arduino's Library folder appropriately to keep everything nice and neat. Finally, I checked that everything was installed correctly by reopening the Arduino IDE, heading to Files, Examples, and scrolling all the way down until I saw the ESP Async TCP and FOMO ESP example libraries. Links to all of the websites required for the install process can be found in the video description below. Having verified that all of the software libraries had installed correctly, I next opened up the Arduino code that I had written for this project. This code is broken into several sections. The first section imports all necessary software libraries, declares and initializes the microcontroller pins, and sets control variables used by the later sections of the code. This section also initializes the name of the device that will be controlled by Alexa, as well as two strings for the Wi-Fi SSID and password the microcontroller will connect to. The next section of the code is the setup method, which initializes a serial port for debugging purposes, sets up the servo and transistor pins, connects to the internet, sets up the FOMO library, adds the device declared in the previous section, and tells the microcontroller which method to execute when it receives a message from Alexa. The next section is the loop method, which contains a single, continuously executing function call along with a short delay that repeatedly checks to see if an Alexa command has been issued. The callback method contains the method that executes when an Alexa message is received and works as follows. 
It first checks to see if the device name transmitted by Alexa matches the device name that was added in the previous section. If it does, it then checks whether the state was commanded to be on or off. If the command state is on, it sets the transistor pin to high, completing the circuit that allows a servo to get power, commands the servo to move to the on switch position, pauses for a second to let the servo complete its motion, commands the servo to move back to the neutral position, pauses again, and then sets the transistor pin to low, cutting the power to the servo. If the commanded state is off, the same sequence of events occurs, except that the servo was initially commanded to move to the off switch position. By returning to the neutral position each time, the light switch is still able to be switched manually if a person doesn't want to control it using Alexa. The final sections of the code implement the pause function for the servo, as well as a method to set up and initialize the Wi-Fi, which is called at the beginning of the program. The important thing about the Wi-Fi setup method is that it sets the Wi-Fi mode to Wi-Fi STA, or station mode, and sets the sleep type to light sleep to save additional power. Compared to the microcontroller's other sleep methods, this light sleep method automatically turns off several functions of the microcontroller when they are not in use, while still allowing it to receive Wi-Fi commands and execute code snippets like PWM control. This light sleep mode only works in Wi-Fi station mode. With the code complete, I clicked the upload button, which compiled the code and uploaded it to the Node MCU. After the lights finished blinking, the program was ready to go, and I was able to pair the device with Alexa by saying, Alexa, discover devices. Starting discovery. This will take up to 20 seconds. If you haven't already, please enable the smart home skill for your smart device from the Alexa app. I found hallway light. To control it, say, turn on hallway light. After Alexa found the device, I disconnected the Node MCU from the USB cable, inserted it into the circuit board, flipped the switch assembly over, and inserted four AA batteries into the battery holder. After this, I peeled off the protective backing of the adhesive strips and mounted the entire assembly to my wall by sliding it over the cover plate. The last step was to test the device by saying, Alexa, turn off hallway light. Alexa, turn on hallway light. Alexa successfully moved the switch to turn my hallway light on and off, meaning that I now had a validated design for a smart light switch that did not require me to modify any of the existing wiring in my house. Overall, the project was a success and the light switch works well. As you may know, the Node MCU also contains functionality to put it into a deep sleep mode that only allows it to wake up at certain intervals, which could drastically lower this project's power consumption. Unfortunately, I was unable to use this functionality for this project, as the deep sleep mode disconnects the Node MCU's Wi-Fi chip, which then needs to reconnect to the internet whenever the microcontroller wakes up. The time it takes to reinitialize the network connection after the microcontroller wakes up is unfortunately a bit too long, and my Echo Dot ends up timing out before it can connect to the Node MCU. As a result, the code for this project forces the Node MCU to operate in a light sleep mode, which means that the battery pack needs to be replaced a bit more frequently than if it were to operate in deep sleep mode. Luckily, the light sleep mode puts the modem to sleep whenever it's not in use while still maintaining its power, meaning that it can reconnect to the internet more quickly when it has to do something. This light sleep mode fortunately increases the battery life quite a bit compared to not using any sleep mode at all. Overall, I can get around five days worth of operation from a AA battery pack, with a bit of variation depending on the delay code in the setting and how often I turn my lights on and off. If you end up making this project yourself, my recommendation would be to run this project off a AA rechargeable battery pack and have a spare set on hand so that you can swap them in and out whenever one battery pack gets empty. One other cool thing about the FOMO library is that it allows a single node MCU to act as multiple internet enabled devices. For example, I can say, Alexa, turn on top shelf. Okay. Which turns the top row lighting on my bookshelf on, and then I can say, Alexa, turn on bottom shelf. Okay. Which turns down the bottom row lighting on my bookshelf. However, both LED strips are connected to the same Node MCU. This functionality opens up a world of possibilities for other uses, which are really only limited by your imagination. If you like this video, please be sure to hit the like and subscribe button below, and to share it with your friends. Your support helps me make more videos. If you end up building this project yourself, or have any other cool projects that you'd like to share, please send them to me using the social media links in the video description. I'd love to see them. The video description below also contains links to STL files and all of the electrical components that you'll need to build your own internet-enabled light switch. 
That's all for now. Thanks for watching and see you soon. But in the meantime, let's go super make something. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit the like button and share it with your friends. Your support helps me make more episodes. Links to all project files can be found in the video description below. Click the subscribe button on the left to keep up with my latest projects. Click the cards on the right to check out more episodes and connect with me on social media. Thanks again for watching. Now go super make something.